Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. I guess we could call this radical because we have the square root of something on the right hand side and everything else is a polynomial. Anyways, so we have this equation x squared plus 2x plus 3 equals the square root of 4 minus x squared and we're going to find the x values or we're going to try to find the x values. Now why did I say that? Let's explore. First of all, I'd like to give you two methods and first method may not be complete. So anyways, let's get started. And at the end, I'd like to show you a graph of the situation because it's, I think, pretty interesting. So my first method is going to involve kind of brute forcing this equation and squaring both sides. Obviously, that makes sense because we have square root of something. So if you just go ahead and write it this way and then square both sides like this and like that. As you know, square and square root are going to cancel each other out. One of the problems with squaring or raising both sides to any even power is uh, the danger of intro introducing extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions are basically uh, solutions that are not solutions. They don't satisfy the original equation, but they just pop up because when you square a negative number and a positive number, you get the same result sometimes. Anyways, let's go ahead and um, cancel these out. And I know people that are rigorous are not going to like this, but anyways, that's what it is. And to square this, I'm going to use the formula a plus b plus c squared. So a squared, b squared, c squared. You can do it differently plus 2 times AB, 2x cubed, plus AC, which is 3x squared, plus BC, which is 6x. And I have 4 minus x squared on the right-hand side because the square root disappeared. Let's go ahead and um, simplify this. x to the fourth, I'm going to get 6x cubed from here. And then 6x squared. Wait a minute. Can't, they can't be both 6. Okay, never mind. This is supposed to be 4x cubed. Well, I don't know what I was thinking x to the fourth plus 4x cubed and then plus 6x squared plus 4x squared that's going to make 10x squared so we've taken care of both of these right and then plus 12x plus 9 you see i underline as we go equals 4 minus x squared so we get a quartic equation and then let's put everything on the same side x to the fourth plus 4x cubed now we're going to bring in a positive x squared, so that's going to be, make no mistake about it, you're not going to subtract, you're going to add. That's one of the you know typical mistakes people make. Uh, you have to do the opposite, and then plus 12x, plus 9 minus 4, that's going to be a 5, and we got ourselves a nice quartic. Hmm. Do you know the quartic formula? It's huge. It doesn't even fit on a screen like this, I don't think. You probably need a really, really wide screen TV to be able to um, see it. Anyways, quartic formula is complicated. And one of the things that's interesting about these equations is, for example, a cubic equation must have a real solution. Why? Because it's cubic, it's odd numbers, so one of the factors must be linear. But that's not true about quartic equations. This quartic equation may not have any real solutions, because it could have complex conjugates, because they pair up nicely when you have a fourth power or any even power. That's why some quadratic equations don't have real roots either. Make sense? But with the odd powers like quintics, you know, heptics, septics, whatever you want to call them, you know, nonics, they all have to have a real solution, at least one. Okay? So, how do we go? Uh, with this log, how, where do we go from here? How do we proceed? Well, one of the options you can do is write this as a product of two quadratics and try to solve for coefficients there. So you can kind of write this as x squared plus ax plus b and then x squared plus cx plus d. But guess what? That's going to introduce a lot of variables, so you have to solve for it, and that's not going to be easy. But if you do something, uh, your job is going to be a little easier, get rid of the x cubed. And to be able to do that, you kind of have to replace x with something like this. You basically need to divide um, the coefficient of x cubed 
by the degree in this case that's going to be uh, 1 because 4 divided by 4 is 1 but you have to put a minus sign the rule says so and by doing the substitution you'll get rid of the cubic term and of course the rest is not very easy but at least uh, finding the coefficients will be slightly easier anyways so that is going to be my first method uh, like I said earlier this will not be completed because come on do you really want to do this that's going to take forever all right so Let's go ahead and proceed uh, with the second method or continue because the second method, in my opinion, is awesome. So you'll see when I present it uh, why I keep calling this awesome and amazing and all that stuff. Tr not trying to brag about myself, but more so with the idea. OK, an idea is not necessarily mine because we're standing on the shoulders of giants. OK, great. Now. So here's what we're going to do. Let me rewrite the original problem. And when you see a problem like this, especially on a math competition or any other Olympiad or anything similar to that, don't just use brute force. Obviously, I introduced the brute force method to show you how algebra can be used. I think alternative methods are good for people, uh, especially that are new to algebra. And But if you have a real test situation, Use the second method, if applicable, of course. And here's what the second method looks like. I noticed that 4 minus x squared, square root of that, is kind of like a semicircle. And this is a parabola. So I'm looking at the intersection point. But in terms of uh, parabolas, it will be helpful if you check their, what is that called? Vertex, right? Yes. Vertices play an important role. And with the circles, obviously, you want to know where the center is and how the graph uh, is drawn and so on and so forth. Anyways, so to keep a long story short, I'm going to write this as x plus 1 squared, which is x squared plus 2x plus 1, by the way, plus 2, because I do need to add the 2 to make it a 3. Now, this is called the vertex form, and you should definitely know this. It's kind of like jumping topics here. Allow me to do that. But this is the vertex form, and super duper helpful because it gives you the vertex right away. It gives you the mi maximum or minimum value of the function, what the x-coordinate of the vertex is, you know, how the parabola behaves. And it's a really, really helpful form. Obviously, there are other forms, but let's use the vertex form in this case. So why did I write it in vertex form? Because notice that this expression is like something squared plus 2. So I can safely say that this expression must be greater than or equal to 2 because this is non-negative. Make sense? Okay, cool. So what is so special about it? Well, here comes the circle or semicircle. Now notice that x squared is not negative and 4 minus x squared is always going to be less than or equal to 4, right? If x is 0, it's going to be 4. If x is greater than 0, if x is different from 0, then it's going to be less than 0. Less than 4, I'm sorry. So this means the square root of that, because both sides are positive, is going to be less than or equal to 2. So that's kind of interesting, right? We have something that is greater than or equal to 2, and we have something that is less than or equal to 2, and they're equal, so they both have to be 2. Yay! We got it, right? Awesome. Let's set it equal to 2, and from here we get this, and x becomes negative 1. Okay, great. x equals negative 1 gives us a solution, right? Well, no. Because if you set the second one equal to 0, right? Because we said that they were, equal, I'm sorry, equal to 2. x will be 0 from here. But guess what? These values do not match. So too bad. We seem to have a solution, but it's not the solution. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph to understand what is going on. That's why I call this graph interesting. Notice that the functions are attaining the y value of 2, but at different x coordinates. Make sense? That's why they do not intersect. And there are no real solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. And I think that's going to be a functional equation, which is all made again. Anyways, until next time, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.